I was going to go easy on you, not to hurt your feelings. You f***ing irritate the shit out of me! I'm only going to get this one chance. It's just a feeling I've got. Like something's about to happen, but I don't know what. All I hear, go get the money. So I go get it. Get it, get it. Hate means I do something. All right, what is going up, peeps? Welcome to another episode of Gap Sell Keenan Live. Today we have Deborah Cancro. Cancro? Cancro. 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 I'm super excited because we got a chick in our midst, and it's about time we had some women on here showing you men how to sell. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, this is how it works this is a real live sales call. This is a real real salesperson with a real product that she hopes that me or a sales guy can buy. If she finds a problem that we have that's big enough, I'll buy it. But if she doesn't or she messes it up, I am going to school her on her selling approach and help her improve it. So um, with that, everybody, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the comments. Share this. Let's get more people watching it, more people learning from it. So with that, no further ado, Deborah, welcome. Hey, Keenan. Thanks for having me on the show. Of course, it's your show, sister. It is your show. Well, I loved your book. I just finished reading it, actually. I confess it took me a while. I'm a slow reader. But uh, you talk about future state a lot. So I'd love to get you talking about your ideal future state for a sales guy, for gap selling, for the whole company. What's your future hey, state? That's pretty broad. With that Oops, sorry, that's pretty broad. But I'll, I'll go with you out of the gate. I mean... <laughs> We have a, oh. a growth, like what, yeah. What, what your goals are. Like, are you looking to scale it, to be huge? Yeah. Look, or, we want to be huge someday, right? I, I want to I want to take out Miller. I'm going to be shy. I want to take out Miller Hyman. I want to take out Sandler. I want us to be the preeminent sales, selling methodology in the country, and if not the world. Ah, awesome. Well, so right now your brand is all about you. And so how are you getting around that challenge about how do you scale uh, the Keenan brand and what so is it? Yeah. I mean, that's a bit of a challenge. I purposely didn't call it Keenan training or Keenan enterprises. I purposely called the book gap selling, right? Um, you know, you have Brian Tracy out there and he's the name, but I don't think anybody's actually sat in front of the guy and taken a training with Brian Tracy in, in 50 years. Right. Um, if he's even still alive, if he's still alive. I don't even know. So, um, we're launching an online training coming up soon, even though I'm doing it, we're hiring new trainers. We actually have a new trainer starting um, now and they're going through the training. So we're going to be hiring new trainers and, we, and we're and we building the whole system that it's that this is gap selling. Gap selling stands on its own. And so our sales team have already been informed that you're no longer selling Keenan training. You're selling gap selling. So when someone calls up or you cold call and they want training, you say, we'll have a trainer at XYZ and they will, we want Keenan. Well, we can't guarantee him or if you want to guarantee him, you're going to pay a shitload more. So we're already building all the processes in that place to prevent to move past me. I saw on your site you're offering a lot of tools as well. A lot are free and seem to be like bringing in, you know, for marketing purposes. But are you also looking to grow your revenue and your your profit margins by selling tools as well as person in person training? Or no, no, no. We're not going to sell any tools. That's all part of our marketing. And boy, I hope we don't have a problem. I'm only saying we got one viewer. Something may be wrong. I hope if you guys can see this or what's going on, hit me up. Tell me you can see it. Tell me everybody can get in because it's not showing that it's working for folks. At least that's what it doesn't look good to me. But anyways, all right, keep going. Here we go. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're cranking uh, now. Yeah, so we're... yes, no, all that is part of the marketing. It's all free on purpose. We believe in being able to educate and teach and help people grow. And so we're not going to charge for any of that. Interesting. Okay. And well, and so within your programs, I haven't been to one of your training programs, unfortunately, but do you have a lot of ways to leverage reinforcement, like after the training's over? Um, like, how do you stay involved with the clients? How do you keep the revenue stream going? Uh, you know, how do you marry like the one, the live coaching with other things that you sell? So we don't. Um, so right now we have the one day training and then we have a management training after. Um, and then we have a consulting practice. And so it, it almost always, how do I say, um, plays out that we do the training and then they say, oh, we want you to train our managers or we want you to come in and help consult and help us make sure this sticks or work with us after the fact. So it, it once you're in and you spend a day with somebody, it naturally, you know, moves into other things. What is the 
biggest opportunity there? Like what is the biggest revenue generator, like the biggest opportunity for scaling in, in all the services that you provide? Just continually. So it's online training that we've got coming out in May, right? So we're doing we're in the process right now of doing an online version. Um, and then um, um, just scaling the actual training beyond me. So, you know, rather than doing, you know, two, three, four, five trainings a week with me, I mean, I'd love to get to the point where we get trainers all over the country and we're doing three, four trainings a day across a whole bunch of trains. So we have so much upside just growing what we have. I can't imagine. I, I mean, so you're traveling a ton, I assume. Well, I was up until last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, how has that affected your? Oh, big time! It's what it's decimated our our pipeline basically, and any 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 trainings we've had we had scheduled in the next month have all been canceled. Wow, completely canceled. Completely, yep. Are you able to bring some of them over to online training, or not yet? Hopefully, the training's not done yet, so. You know, yeah. online training, though, this is the third time I've told you about online training and when it's due. And it's the third time you've asked me about something relating to it. So you got to really make sure you pay attention to what people say. You need to be listening, not thinking about your next answer. So here's my question. Here's my first bit of coaching for you. I really don't understand where you're going. Right. So, I mean, I, I get that you may understand the relevancy of these questions, but you haven't really grounded me in anything and you haven't really. I don't feel like you found a problem that I'm having. So without that problem, you know, because we're doing this and I'm nice and all that, you know, I'm letting you go. But in a real selling world, I would have stopped you about five minutes. Ago, okay. What do you want here? I, I don't understand where we're going. Okay. Well, so I assumed you, there was a one liner. I, I assumed you knew what we did. So I apologize for that. We have an online platform to enable people to practice anything out loud and get automated feedback. So we're sold as a reinforcement tool for training and it's a perfect reinforcement tool for online training. So if there's any component of your training where people need to practice anything out loud, it's really easy where people can reinforce what they're okay, doing. So flip, this. so flip this. Think about the types of problems or challenges that somebody with an online course would have or has and start asking me questions around that. Yeah. So when when are you launching this online training? May. May. Okay. Yeah. And for the third time. For the third time I've told you this. You said you were gonna be gentle. <laughs> I know, but you keep I keep telling you something and you keep asking me the same question over and over. So you're rolling out online training in May. And how long is it? <laughs> is it a is it a couple hours? Is it a couple of days? Like what does it look like? Um the, the, the online training is going to be we don't have it done, but it's probably gonna be about six or eight hours broken into a shitload of modules. Ah, so you expect people to do it kind of over a month or like how long do you expect? I, I would think you'd be foolish to do it over a month. I would like to think you'd get it done in a week, but I don't know. It depends on, it depends on the, um, on the, uh, what do you call the student or whatever. Got it. Okay. And uh, so it'll be pro mo most cases <coughs> the manager will require their employees to take the training, require the reps to take the training and manage that and make sure that they do it. Yeah. So we'll have a way for managers to see how people do. Um, we're structuring it so individuals can buy it. So if you work and your company doesn't pay for training or anything like that, then you can buy it yourself. Or if it's somebody going, you want to buy it for your team, you can buy it for your team and you can see the stats. We'll have a corporate one where there's multiple layers so that VP can see the North, the West, the East, you know what I'm saying? So we have multiple. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So is there any practicing component of that? Is, or do you have quizzing or practicing or any kind of assessment built in? So there is quizzing. Uh, there is quizzing. It's um, the training is built to sort of a build your own or take your own journey. So based on answers, they'll get different responses, right? So it's just not sit and watch, you know, they'll, they'll take a test or a small quiz or they'll answer a question. And based on that, it goes here and they get this video, it goes here and they get that video. So it, it, it's somewhat of your own journey. Um, yeah. Awesome. So I can't really ask you a question about how that works yet because you haven't launched it yet. So that's where I'm asking just from your experience and other training that you've taken or, you know, what you know about training, do you feel that it's a challenge for people to retain what they've learned without practicing it? Yeah. Yeah. I would. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that's true. And would you be interested to. Uh, don't try to sell me yet. You haven't found a problem. Keep digging on that. Well, I mean, so retention, right? Retaining what you've learned is that 
is that something that you think your clients would like you to offer them? I don't know. So, so this is, so what you're trying to do is you, your head's in the cell mode, right? So what you want to do is you really want to start having a conversation and getting me to think about the value of the product I'm building. So, right. So one of the questions you could have asked once we started talking about this was, Hey, Keenan, do you have any retention elements built into this? Right. I, I mean, that's your product, but I'm giving you the question, right? right. So ask that question. Okay. Do you, do you have any retention elements built into your online training that you're offering? No, I didn't even know they existed. Awesome. Would you? No, don't try to sell me. Keep digging into that. Got it. Okay. You didn't know they existed at all? Like, have no. you looked into any ways to help? No, I, I, I don't know them? what I don't know. Interesting. Uh, in your live training, what do you do to help people retain what they've learned? We, that's a great question too. We use the, uh, we really encourage they buy the, um, the management um, training. We train the managers on how to use the pipeline and other things like that to drive or to drive retention. Interesting. Have you ever seen that study that shows that people retain, you know, a small percentage of what they hear yes. um, and then a little more if they experience and then if they practice it even more. And then if they teach someone else, like that's the golden standard. Um, yes. So where do you feel like your online training fits on that model right now? I mean, considering we have no retention in there. I mean, uh, uh, we have, let's put it this way, because we don't know anything about retention as far as it's not a key core competency, because we haven't really built it in there. Uh, you know, we're banking like anybody else would on the interact interactivity of the training. And because we're going on build your own journey, when somebody doesn't answer the right question, I come back and be like, ah, no, you got this wrong. Think again. Try it again type of thing. But outside of that, we don't have anything. Right. What do you think that costs your customers or, you know, what's the. Have no idea. I have no idea. So we, we want to go with this. Right. Is again, this is the power of really listening and thinking, right? And being an active participant in this conversation. You're really not going to get me to see a problem in something that hasn't existed yet, right? Yeah. You're not going to give me that. But what you can do, what you can do, the problem you could zero in on here for me is your ability to get me to see that I may be launching a less than absolutely effective training. Like that's where you could kind of go, right? Yeah. So that you could start getting me to stop seeing, okay, wait. Um, uh, so when you ask the question, be like, okay, so where do you think, or what do you think the impact would be if you could actually measure the, the retention of people or in your ability to sell it, right? Do you, do you think managers and um, VPs would value being able to measure and assess the retention of their investment? Right now you, right? Like, or you could turn that into a question. Because you don't have it, are you able to offer anything more or any way to make management feel that once they took this training, that, that the people would retain it and get the value out of it? I can't do that now. All right, well, that then you can tell me that's a problem. Don't ask me. You can tell me that's a problem. Tell you that's a problem. Yeah, it is a problem. Training programs, I've taken sales training in the past, and uh, I went and I got all excited. I learned all this stuff, and then I didn't put it into practice. And putting something into practice is so much harder than just learning it. That's why I'm putting myself out here. I'm practicing with you right now. But I mean, obviously practice is important. I think everybody realizes that. So, you know, what do you think of adding that into your programs? To oh, add I'm intrigued, to actually. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Oh. Yes, very what intrigued. What questions come to your mind? or like, how, does it, like, how does it work? Like, how, how do you, without going into some big, long pitch, how mm -hmm. does it how does it work in an online environment? In an online environment, you create assignments. So you make these little mini assignments, practice this, practice this, practice this. You define criteria, what you want to see, what you want to do. You can put in even keywords and then they practice it and they can log in in 30 seconds. Like you send them a link, they follow it. They can immediately start recording and then they get automated feedback on how they sound. Um, we started out as public speaking training and have evolved since then. But so they get coaching on how they sound. They can see where they're boring. They can see where they're confident. You can go in or their manager can go in or they can go with their peers and coach as well. Um, but the ability for you to create little mini assignments that are really customized to exactly what module they just did. And how, would I, how would I, where, I'm trying to ask here. 
where is the line between your platform and my ability and skill or anybody's ability and skill to understand how to build what they need to practice? So because gap selling is so fluid and it is not your typical tips and tricks and tactics, overcome obje- overcome objections, do this. And, right. right. Because it's not that and it's much more about understanding where the buyer is and knowing what you're looking for. I- I'm having a hard time understanding how I would build something like that to test for that. Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways of things that you could build. So little so six types of assignments. So one could be something you could practice. Um, you could even have them practice with a role play with a peer. So you can tell them practice some kind of scenario and they could practice together and record it and upload it. And then, you know, they can go in and write comments and evaluate it afterwards. Um, it's all cloud based. So anybody can access it and give feedback and all that. So that's one way. Uh, another way is working with the manager on messaging. So you add a lot of value, I'm assuming, in helping them craft messaging as well. So a lot of that to be ready with answers in the moment preparing ahead of time how you're going to answer certain things like how you different than a competitor certain objections they are things you can prepare so the you can make customized offerings like that as well and then lastly you know your whole brand is about like excelling and energy and being at the top of your game and so even just helping you know senior people being as polished as possible making good presentations that's like a third use case where you know I get, can... I get the use cases i get them right. I'm sold on that right what right. i'm struggling with right now is the execution uh-huh right i'm struggling right now through the execution how i could you how this would work for a sales guy and in particularly online sales training so what i'm hearing is i'm gonna have to go in and begin to be able to create specific specific environments that some that are re- replicatable and repeatable that, yeah. that are more objective than subjective. And that's been the hardest part about gap selling is from an exit, from a play perspective or a, a role play perspective or anything like that, it's a highly subjective because everything is based on the question you ask. I yeah. ask, it's, it's, it, unlike all the bullshit we get everywhere else, it's I ask you a question from a discovery perspective and it's a giant if then. If you say this, then this. If you say this, then this. If you say this, then this. And it's never pre-scripted. Like that's why I was really pushing back on you. It's like you really need to be listening and be understand what environment we're working with. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, absolutely. So I'm having a hard time figuring out how or what I could help them train on on their own, right? And so that and be able to measure it in a way that they're doing it correctly. Because if I have someone come on and and let's say they practice five discovery questions and they're shitty discovery questions. And, and they think they did them right. I, <coughs> I, I, that doesn't help anybody, right? Yeah, so exactly. Have time with is the execution. Yeah. So, I mean, you bring up a good point. So in those cases, I mean, preparing someone to think on their feet and have the right answer at the right time, that is challenging. So we can't solve every problem. But preparing for the most common ones is something that your customers certainly can do for onboarding or just training new reps. Let me ask uh, this question. Is this built, could this be built into our online training? And and so it's part of the actual user experience? It could, yeah. We have an API as well. So that would be a little bit more of a heavy lift for you. Like, I mean, you could use our tool to start out immediately as is and just build some modules and go. Or you can integrate our API into your platform and build anything you want. So if we didn't use your API, how would we implement this? If you didn't use the API, you could immediately, I mean, I could create you a link today and you could send it to a client and I could help you make a module, like a little, we could make a practice module or something simple. So you could have it there. Then you send a link to your client, they log in and within seconds, they can see the module that you created, see what you want them to practice, see the criteria you've set and your expectations for it. And then they click record, they practice, and then they get some analysis about how they sounded. And then they can share it with you or they can share it with their coach or they can share it with their peer. And then they can elaborate on all the things that maybe the automation didn't handle. Does that make sense? No, it does, it does, it does. Okay, I have, I have a, oh, hold on, Ryan Sushland. Um, dude, 
This is number 17. I, I, I don't know where you've been, Ryan. Like he said, I hope you can do more of these. Ryan, it's number 17, dog. You might want to you might want to pay more attention. You, I'm doing them every week. And go look at my page. I get the list of the next ones coming up. So there you go, Ryan. Um, okay, this is intriguing, actually. So you, my friend Deborah, have gotten further than most people because it's pretty interesting. Yes. Now, I have issues with, with – um, or I have some concerns or questions around execution. I don't know how well our – what we do lends to this, number one. And number two, um, we're building our LMS ourselves. So I don't even know if we're building an API for it. So there's – talking about heavy lifting, it's custom-made LMS. We're going to um, – that's all right. Better late than never, Ryan. Um, I love you, though, baby. Um, uh, I don't even know if we built our own API. We're building this ourselves, so I don't know how that fits. And, and so I, I'm trying to figure out, is this something I want to provide after? Is it something I want to use in? So for once – I'm actually really intrigued about seeing more of the product. Um, now, in helping you, right, again, I'm the easiest person to sell to when I find my own problem because I just stop waiting for salespeople to figure it out. But I want to help school you, okay? Mm -hmm. So basically what I said to you is I think it's, a, it's not good, i.e., therefore I think it's a problem, if I don't have a way to help maximize retention, okay? So mm -hmm. I want you to take a few more minutes to help broaden or widen the gap. I want you to think about some questions you could ask so that you help me. I mean, I'm, I'm there in my head, but I'm helping you help me if I wasn't there. You. See, this is a bigger problem or greater opportunity than I necessarily see and why it should be elevated in my sense of urgency or the urgency of the priorities I'm working with. And the hint, the hint is the, I see a problem or admit that I believe it's a problem that right now I don't offer retention support for the online training. Right. Well, so tell me about occasions in the past, like where you observed or even experienced a problem with people not retaining what they learned. Have Have you experienced issues with not, that? Not, not as it relates to my business, no. But I, have you seen clients suffer? Like you know, they'll they'll hire any trainer. Maybe they've had a past trainer before they found you, and they'll. So you now know, you're selling they, me. Okay, the question you're asking me is yes, I have. But you're selling me on the idea of which I've already agreed. I I believe retention. I mean retention is important. What I want you to think about is how you can make me see it for my business potentially being a bigger problem or bigger opportunity. I think it's okay. Um, Got to ask a question. Yeah, I mean, the do you see an opportunity to help way more people? Like online training is pretty common, but I mean, if you had this novel way to get people interacting and practicing and retaining more, like, do you think you would broaden the appeal to way more people? Do, and, yes. and, you and, do, yep, yep. and what about overseas people, people that you can't travel to, like all these people that you're engaging, do you think if they could engage a little more than just taking quizzes, you know, do, do you think that it would just help you expand? More yes. than you spend today? Yes. Um, now make try to ask some questions and make it specific to me. Think about my online training. Think about that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, have you started selling the online training already? Uh, you already like, know the answer uh, to that. You already know the answer to that. Preset. Uh, okay. I mean. What's the answer to that? I, I am not sure if you've already, I mean, it sounds like you've been advertising it. No. When did I say it's coming out? It's coming out in May. Okay. So if it's coming out in May, do I have people on it already? No, but have you already like sold it? No, it's not online training. You can't, no one's going to pay you and then wait three months to get on. So no, no. Okay. No. <clears throat> so what is the biggest, um, when you start marketing it, what are the things that you're going to be differentiating like what are Ooh. do you have some specific things that make you different oh there you go there you go that's a good one differentiation well done so outside of the actual book in the method right outside of the book in the method in me actually doing the training um no other, let me say me the book and then the choose your own path those are our three ways of differentiating and in the world, I'm, get, I'm teeing you up with a softball. So hope you get it. So in, 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 I'm a huge fan of differentiation. Like, I honestly believe differentiation acts as the conduit for how you can actually solve more problems. People think differentiation is product-centric. No, 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 no. Product, 
differentiation is problem centric. The more unique differentiation I have, the more value I can bring because the more problems I can solve. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So, so yes, the idea of differentiation is huge. It's one reason we chose to spend the amount of money we're spending for such a small company to build our own customized LMS rather than use somebody else's. So we chose to go with a gaming company instead of a traditional LMS builder because games understand the gaming gaming aspect of this takes you here and that takes you there. That's so, yes. Awesome. Yes. That's awesome. So you hired a gaming company. Um, that's awesome. Uh, but have you heard of anybody else having a practice aspect to help people retain? No. No. That's why it's very intriguing. And uh, do you think that would help you brand even more about how how advanced and you know in the digital age and all the things that you're claiming? Do you think that would help your brand even more to be different than anyone else? Yes, absolutely. That's awesome. Would you want to have a conversation with that gaming company as well and talk about how we could integrate? Yeah, if I can, look, I'm gonna, so I see you going. You're you're all ready to sell. Like you have the same problem every other salesperson has. You find a problem, you want to lock in, and you want to start selling it, right? So look, you got it. If you if this is a real sales call, you've done enough to get a second meeting. We're absolutely gonna have a second meeting. I'm gonna want to watch you walk me through this um, and help me understand. But where you could go is in the area of where you started earlier. Is okay. So Keenan, what are your growth goals for this online? Who are you uh-huh. competing? Right. What are your growth goals in this online? Where do you want to take this? Who are you competing with? Right. How many modules do you have? Right. So, so by asking that question, I'd say I have, I have one all day module. Right. So basically, I don't have 10, 12, 15 different training modules. I have one right now. So it's one and done. So then you could be like, so basically this one has to hit big. People really have to like it. It has to create impact. It has to get them going. Yes. Right. So these are all ways. And then I'm say, so I want to do, you know, uh, 1000 in the first this year. I want to do 3000 next year, 5000 after that. <coughs> so then you can be like, OK, so what are you going to charge for the average um, the average uh, price? Who are you going to be selling this to? Right. Oh, you're going to be selling this to Fortune 500. Do you feel that Fortune 500 ever has an issue with retention? Do you ever hear people talk about they're afraid to invest in sales training because of retention? Yes, the answer is they do. Yes, the answer is they'll be selling to Fortune 500 and they want to know how the people can retain it. Yes, it's become a, it's been an objection in past sales. Like you, Deborah, should know all this and you should be asking me these questions to get me to say, no, I don't have this level of differentiation. No, my competitors don't have it. Yes, I'll be selling to these people. Yes, they're asking for it. Yes, it could cost me sales if I can't show them how I could do it. So you could have gotten to the same place but with me feeling a much more giant sense of urgency and need because you got all this shit out. So Keenan, I'm confused. <laughs> you just said that your goal is a thousand this year and 3000 next year. Do you mean like units of selling the online training? Yeah. But if you're going to B2B, I mean that there's so many more, how many sales reps are in one fortune 500 company? Like, yeah, I'm a conservative guy. I'm a cons- that's a great question. I'm a conservative guy. And when I don't have data, and I, and I don't mean any disrespect to you or anybody out there, trying to sell something like online training, um, either either through SEO and through um, uh, AdWords and all that type of stuff, and or through a sales team that calls up on these organizations, is 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 a bitch. And so I really have no data to know that if if a thousand or three thousand is nothing, or if it's you know, it's going to take us forever. So what I do know is that if I sell those numbers at what we're asking, I mean, th- that's that's going to do more. That's well, I'm perfectly happy with that. And I can grow from there. That's interesting. So who do you think is the biggest competitor or competitors in selling? It sounds like, you know, you're worried that you, that you won't be differentiated enough to really grow quickly. So who is the biggest threat or what is the biggest threat in that growth? So it's a highly fractured market. And it's funny. I'm a weird dude in that regard. I'm not worried, but I'm an opportunist. I'm like, I know that everybody else smells and stinks the same and they all have to do the same stuff. And so I'm not worried. I just know I see it as an opportunity and I want to go be different. So anytime I see an opportunity to be different, that intrigues me. And uh, being different is your plan on, you know, how did get into these large companies and is large are, are the fortune 500 your target or who is to the target 
buyer for the. So in this one, it's basically it's it's Fortune 500, it's medium enterprise, small business, and even the individual sales rep. Because online really has no, <laughs> there's no parameters, right? I mean, we're l literally structuring how you buy it. If you're an individual and you want to do it, you can buy this package, whatever. If you're a small business or a, with one sales manager and four or five or six or seven salespeople, you can buy this one. If you're medium sized with, let's say, two or three managers or regions and one layer of management or you know above that, we caught, we caught two layers and we're having this one. And then we're going to have the enterprise where it can be four or five or six layers, you know, senior VP and then regional VPs and then directors and managers will have that one. So depending on what you're buying it for, how you're buying it, you know, it, it'll work for anybody. And we're structuring it that way. Which are you targeting first? Like for, for marketing perspective or like what you're, you know, it, it'll, it'll, we're, we're, it's going to be um, in tandem. It's going to be right. So all of our SEO and AdWords are going to go for, um, for targeting the individual and the businesses. The sales team will probably call the midsize just because they're easier and faster. Right. So, but sort of all in tandem. Got it. Okay. So midsize, like how, how uh, are, are you, is your ideal customer, you know, a manager with a lot of like maybe 50 reps, hundred reps, a couple hundred reps. Yeah, our, 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 our ideal customer profile is companies between about 50 and 250 million with, you know, reps anywhere from 20 to 200. Okay. And, uh, and how would they buy it? So you get the sale and then so the salesperson calls them up and sells it to them. Then the salesperson will sell it to them and get them signed up or they can just go to the website and sign up right there. So it's a one time yep. fee per, per person. Yep. And then do they have access for a certain amount of time? One year. One year. Got it. Mm -hmm. okay. And do you envision that they'll keep interacting with it? You said you think that the course could take a day or two. So do you envision they'll come back to it a lot? Often? Smart. What's that? Great question. If they're smart, yes. What do you think will keep them coming back? The, the difficulty of it and just wanting to get better. So that's a great question. I'm assuming they're going to want to come back because they're going to want to try to – the same people reason people tell me they read my book two or three times in a row, right? So that's a great question. I'm just banking on the fact that people want to get good at it, that it's not cookie cutter, that you just don't memorize something and do it, and they're going to come back to, to strengthen their skills. And as you know, like I think practicing is a big part of that. <laughs> <laughs> So what you were able to, what you would, what you could have said there was, so you're expecting them to come back to um, read it over and over, but you don't have anything that will actually allow them to interact with their ongoing reinforcement. Yes. So right now you, that piece is passive, Keenan. Yes, it is. Right. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So listen here, Deborah. You earned yourself a second meeting. Well done. Very intrigued. Um, proud of you. Um, so I want you to reach back out to Danielle. She'll get you on my calendar. Um, ask her to include Brady and, um, we will take a look. We will take yeah, a look. A shameless plug. Yes. <laughs> voice vibes. Yes, yes, yes. Well done. Here, I'll give you 10 seconds. Tell everybody what voice vibes does. Uh, voice vibes is a platform to help people practice and reinforce any message out loud. So right. Yeah. Master those messages. All right. There you go. There you go. Here's a question for you. How is it different than Gong or Chorus? So it's not a call recording platform. I saw that less than 25% of your clients today use a call recording platform. We, we don't tie to the call recording platform necessarily. You can upload a recorded call into it, but you can practice anywhere, anytime. So it's, gr it's a great reinforcement with a training program. Okay. How would it be different than just going out and practicing on Zoom? We have an integration with Zoom. If you want to take the Zoom recording and upload it to Voice Vibes, we give objective feedback about how you sounded. So some some coaching on how you can improve. And again, we can show you where you were boring, where you were captivating. You go back and see, oh man, what was I talking about when I was boring? And it, it gives you some automated stuff, so it makes it more fun. Then you know nobody just goes back and listens to their recordings. Nobody, everybody hates to listen to themselves. So we've made it fun, and you you can just get some high level feedback that you can trust. In private. All right. I'm intrigued. Very, very intrigued. Well done. Well done. Well done. All right, everybody. This was – look at how you, you did good. You did good. We got to work. We got to work on your, your desire to hurry up and get to the close. Like salespeople that shit all the time. They ask four or five questions like, okay, 
So what if I could get you this? If I could make this, would you buy? It's like, we got to teach you to slow your roll. And I hope you understood when I shared some of those questions with you, how much information about my business you were leaving on the table, right? Do you remember in the current state, physical or literal in the book? Physical, literal? No. Read, I don't. The, book, read the book okay. again. Okay. Go to the current state, right? And in the current state, I talk about the physical and literal, right? And the physical and literal is where the context lives, right? So that's things like what is my um, – how many, um, how many, um, what's my current plan for the number of users? When is it going to be delivered? How many modules is it going to have? Right. And by getting all of that stuff, you can begin to understand what my specific unique world looks like. And so you can start to sell to my specific unique world rather than selling to some big, you know, ethereal, you know, anybody, anywhere type of environment. Right. You want to be able to get as much about me and what I'm doing and where I'm going and what's currently happening and how I measure it and what the impact is to me today upon my numbers. Do you see what I'm saying? So you're selling custom to me, not a product to a big, wide open general use case. Because you said it yourself, stop selling the use cases. Yeah, okay? I'd really like to learn more. I mean, if we talk again, I'd love to see learn more about what you're doing with the online training. And I'm fascinated. Okay. All right, so good. Read the book again, or at least go to the part where we talk about building the gap. And remember to understand the current state and the future state and the five elements of each. I can't even find it in my own damn book, right? The five elements of each, okay? Physical and literal, problem, impact, uh, emotion, root cause on the current state, and then similar on the, on the future state, okay? Yeah, thanks. All right. You got it. All right, everybody else, for all those of you who are listening, I hope this was valuable. Another Gap Sell Keenan, where if you have a product that solves a problem that I have, I will buy. And Deborah is on her way. So, everybody, until next time, thank you very much. Please share this. If you are not following me, follow me so you can get notifications on these. And let's spread the word. Until next time, y'all know what I'm going to say. Peace. Come out. All I hear, go get the money. money. So I go get it. Get it, get it. Hate means I do something.